So now that we've looked at the power of single cell sequencing, let's just take a quick look at some of the methods that are out there for generating single cell data be before we go into uh, the method we are using at 10x. So um, plate-based methods, uh, starting here on the left, they involve uh, fax sorting of single cells into individual wells, uh, either 96 or 384 well plate format and then performing reverse transcription in each well to generate a single cell data. So this method does produce uh, high sensitivity data. It is relatively low throughput and takes about two days to complete. Moving on to uh, nano well based technologies, they involve uh, flowing cells and oligo tagged beads over a specific cartridge with many cells. And then cells and oligo tagged beads are deposited into the wells where reverse transcription occurs. So here each oligo tagged bead then has a unique sequence that tags the cells so that it's easy to tell which transcript came from which cell. This met method uh, has a much higher level of throughput than the, the plate-based version, but it is challenging to scale up and it takes you know, about the same amount of time, about a day and a half. Combinatorial barcoding also uses 96 or 384 well reaction plate uh, plates, but it works a bit differently than the plate-based methods. It involves depositing unique indices in each well of a plate and then depositing a pool of cells into each well. So all the transcripts from all the cells in that pool then have the same index. And from there, all the cells are re-pooled together and then redistributed into another plate with unique indices that are added to the transcripts. So, uh, so this process is repeated and over time, the random distribution of cells into wells with unique barcode means that each cell acquires a unique combination of indices that can be used to identify the cell's transcripts. It is very um, time consuming. It is, uh, involves a lot of pipetting step. Uh, so it's a very time intensive workflow that takes you um, about two days to complete. The last method shown here is a droplet based technology, which is what we use at 10x. Um, so droplet-based technology involves uh, micro microfluidics to generate nanoliter size droplets and which, uh, which contain oligotagged beads and single cells. Each bead has a unique barcode that is then attached to the cellular transcripts in the droplet. So this method really nicely balances the ability to scale while um, it scale up easily while having a streamlined workflow and that takes around a day uh, to complete. And while it can be intimidating to start a new technique, um, you know, I want to reassure you that single cell sequencing actually shares a lot of commonalities with other, me other methodologies that you may be uh, already familiar with. So there is, um, you know, some new steps to add to already familiar steps in the, in the lab. So at the end of the day, all really experiments come down to three key steps, which is sample collection and processing, so preparing a sample, then performing the experiment, which is the single cell library prep and sequencing in this case, and then of course the data analysis. And single cell sequence, sequencing really is no different. So if we take a closer look at uh, some of the similarities and differences between single cell and other commonly used uh, laboratory uh, techniques um, that we've already looked at, you'll see um, you know, that it is actually, um, there is a lot of um, similarities so to help you adopt this technology uh, relatively quickly. So qPCR here, we, we um, listing that it is the single cell, for single cell sequencing, it's different as it's able to profile the whole transcriptome as opposed to just a few targeted genes. And single cell sequencing also maintains the single cell resolution of your data. However, both methods involve creation of cDNA from RNA. So that is a, a common process uh, to analyze differential gene expression. For bulk RNA sequencing, um, the similarity is that both actually involve preparation of a next generation sequencing library and then sequencing them, of course. So they are both able to pro uh, profile whole transcriptomes 
And the only key difference is between these two methods is that with single cell, you now maintain the single cell resolution. Um, so you are able to assess, assess the heterogeneity of the sample. And then lastly, uh, flow cytometry. Uh, flow cytometry is such is a very commonly used technique that's been around for decades. And cells are typically labeled uh, with fluorescent antibodies and then passed through the sorter, which runs them past the laser in a single file. So the, the fluorescent refraction from the laser provides data on what proteins are expressed in the cell. So similar to single cell sequencing, here you also need a single cell suspension from your sample that is clean, that doesn't have any, any lumps or any debris because you want to um, uh, pass it through uh, the fax sorter. So there is a commonality there. And additionally, flow cytometry provides data with single cell resolution, but it is a bit limited to the number of antibodies uh, that can be analyzed. However, flow cytometry is also a very um, commonly used method within the single cell uh, workflow to um, enrich for a certain uh, cell type, for example, if you wish to profile that. So how might single cell, be sequence, uh, single cell sequencing be uh, applied to your own research? So we have listed some of the, the very key uh, topics that are being addressed in a lot of the publications that we are seeing and uh, you can characterize and identify, as we said, the heterogeneous cell population in a sample. You can discover new cell markers and regulatory pathways. You can uncover novel cell types, cell states, and rare cell types within your sample, as well as reconstructing uh, developmental hierarchies and uh, lineage relationships if you conduct like a time course experiment and you can profile healthy and diseased tissue and organs. So really, when we look at the history of uh, methodologies and single cell sequencing, let's uh, just take a quick look towards the future before we uh, finish with the, with the first part of today's uh, presentation and look at, uh, look at where we think uh, single cell sequencing can take us. And um, so really looking at the resolution that single cell uh, provides and, uh, you know, the amount of experiments or cells you can profile, you um, would be able to completely characterize all sorts of different tissue types uh, that you are choosing to analyze and form um, a tissue atlases, for example. You can deeper uh, understand diseases and, uh, for example, cancer, you can identify uh, targets to uh, really allow, like to firstly to understand root causes and then identify targets for, for more personalized treatments. And uh, you can also co uh, perform comprehensive profiling of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease um, utilizing this technique. And this is of course not an exhaustive list. These are just the key um, parts of where single cell sequencing um, can take us in the in research.